Hi, my name's John Dick, and in this development blog video, we'll cover four different skill sets. Stealth, camouflage, awareness, and tactics. These skills dynamically change depending on external influences or choices you make with your character during game time. Before we start with the scat video, we'd like to say something about the unfair advantage of third-person perspective over first-person perspective. In the current video, we've recreated the worst-case scenario that players can experience in all third-person shooting games today. Not only that TPP is unfair over FPP, it's unfair in general since players on elevated positions have a huge advantage over other players. So far, there's no game that has provided a solution for this problem. Some games do offer split servers depending on the view, but in our opinion, that's kind of lame. So, what exactly did we do to make things better? In Scum, everything you experience is a projection of what your character experiences in the game. No matter which view you prefer, you will not be able to see things if your character doesn't see them or feel them. This means if you want to see behind the wall, you'll have to take a peek and risk compromising your position. The moment you take a look, your character's awareness will kick in. What will be shown to you on the screen is a result of complex equations that involve your character's awareness and tactic skill versus the enemy's stealth and camouflage skills. The red outlines representing that tactic skill have been activated also. Notice that it works for both first-person and third-person perspective. Once tactics time expires, you'll lose information about the enemy's position. The only way to get it again is to take another look. Okay, let's cover the tactics skill first. Tactics is linked with the intelligence attribute and represents the ability to predict trajectories of objects in 3D space. Imagine you're looking through the window and notice a car slowing down at the crossroad with a left turn signal turned on. Even if you stop looking at that car, you'll have a rough idea about about its trajectory. In the video, the character on the right has advanced level in tactics and is able to track its target much longer than the character on the left. Remember, tactics will not work if your target is in peripheral vision. It works only for central vision. Here you can see three players with two different awareness skill levels. While the first and third one are observing the surroundings more casually, the soldier in the middle has activated focus mode by holding down the right mouse button. The enemy soldier with the activated camouflage is sneaking directly towards them. The first character is what we call a trained observer. He has advanced awareness skill level and will notice the enemy almost immediately once he leaves the cover. The middle one with the activated focus mode will notice the enemy a bit later. By being focused, your character is paying more attention and that will give you a bonus to awareness' hotspot radius. The third soldier is the last to notice the enemy. As you train your characters to observe, hotspot radius will increase. Awareness skill will determine what is rendered and what isn't. And even if things are rendered, that doesn't mean that it will be easy to notice them. Well camouflaged snipers can totally blend in with surroundings and become almost invisible. So if focus mode is so great with the bonus multiplier, why shouldn't you use it all the time? The character on the right is using focus mode to observe the surroundings while jogging through the level. His stamina is dropping slightly faster than the stamina of the character on the left. The influence of the focus mode is really small, but still, if you combine all the other factors that impact your character's performance, it may be crucial in life and death situations. Awareness is defined by two factors, hotspot radius and falloff radius. If the camouflaged objects are farther away and out of falloff radius, your character will not be able to see them, unless he has some sort of magnification, for example, a sniper rifle. All magnifying devices automatically add bonuses to hotspot and falloff, making it easier for you to notice things at higher distances. Looking through the scope also automatically activates the focus mode. Awareness is not only useful in combat situations, it also provides you with benefits when you're searching for useful items like food or gear. If you use focus mode, awareness will highlight the items within your spot radius. This will help you to see them from a distance, which is especially useful for smaller items. Characters with low awareness skill will have to come closer to detect the same items. During the nighttime, awareness spot radius is significantly reduced. Unless you find some kind of night vision device, you'll not be able to detect things with the same efficiency as during the day. A higher level of awareness will give you some additional benefits, such as the ability to detect imminent dangers. It won't work 100% of the time, but when you get notified, be sure to react swiftly, or you may lose your life. Okay, let's cover the stealth skill now. The stealth skill is linked with the dexterity attribute, but it also depends on other factors. 
To determine the final level of noise that your character makes, we first analyze the type and amount of gear your character carries. Then we take into consideration the movement and ground material type. This is the starting point of the noise level calculations. The next step is to factor in the overall weight of the character. Again, this system is fully dynamic and it's linked directly with the character's metabolism. All things that influence body mass are taken into consideration, like fluid or food intake, for example. The larger the body, the more noise it will make. Finally, the last thing taken into consideration is actual stealth skill level. The higher the skill, the better you silence the noise that your character makes. Modern gaming engines have many limitations. Don't you simply hate when you think that you're safely hidden far away in dense foliage just to realize that you stick out like a dog's balls? In Scum, our methods allow players to be equally competitive regardless of the graphical settings they use to play the game. The guy at camp is preparing some delicious beans. Let's call him Donald. Three soldiers are approaching him over the hill. The left one, called Huey, is crawling through dense vegetation. The middle one, Dewey, is crouching his way towards the larger bush, and the right one is simply walking straight in the open like John Wayne in Sands of Iwo Jima. Let's address him as Louie. Notice that from the Donald's perspective, he only sees Louie. Dewey is well hidden in the bush, while Huey can't be seen because he's well camouflaged. On far distances, the game engine doesn't render foliage, Yet still, Huey is invisible until he decides to blow his cover simply by changing his stance. At that moment, his camouflage has been terminated and he becomes visible. The camouflage skill can only be activated in dense foliage when your character is prone and out of plain sight. Everything you just saw is still in development, but in short, these were the basics of scat skills. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and our development blog at www.scumgame.com. By the way, did you notice all seven people in this scene? No? Congratulations! You just got wasted. Get good, scrub. Don't forget to check out our other scum videos for more features and general badassery. We'll see you next time.